Have you ever grinded hundreds of hours on a game only for your main character or favorite item to get nerfed? Well, anime characters experience something like that too. Unfortunately, they're at the whims of their writers, so we can only watch as our favorite characters get nerfed into oblivion. Today, I've got a list of a few such characters, and I'd like to pose a few questions like, why were they nerfed? How did they react to their setback, and was it really necessary? Also, before we get into this, yes, this video has spoilers, so if you haven't caught up to any of these, you may want to skip that section. Let's start with a character that some love and others love to hate, Jotaro Kujo from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. For those that don't know, Jotaro is a stone-cold badass that wields a punch-loving specter, whose vocabulary mostly consists of the word ora. Jotaro is called to action when his nemesis Dio threatens his mother's life. Refusing to just let his mother die, Jotaro fights his way to Dio, only to discover he's completely outmatched. Soon we learn Dio has the ability to stop time. And how do you defeat an ability that can render you completely helpless? Well, you power up and do it yourself. Now, throughout the battle, Jotaro can stop time for as many as 5 seconds, and thanks to that power up, he's able to beat Dio, but fast forward to the next part in the series and suddenly his time stopping ability is out for a smoke break. So what the heck happened? The writer explains that the ability decayed from lack of use, but does that make sense? Well in the show, Characters' powers are linked to their spiritual vitality, so you could say that he got spiritually weaker. But I'd say he needs to hit the spiritual gym. But for real, he's older, more mature, and probably has better skincare routine. Okay, well was this really necessary? There I'd argue absolutely yes. Jotaro is included in the next part, but he's also meant to be a side character. So if you're gonna include him, you gotta nerf him to avoid power creep. And how did Jotaro as a character deal with this? Well, he's a mature guy, so he spends little time dwelling on his loss and simply looks at each situation objectively. Of course, he knows that if he was at full power, he'd be better poised to survive new threats. But despite that, he doesn't let that affect his ability to plan and execute based on what he can do now. Next up, we're talking about Gohan, the poster child for inconsistent power levels. Son of the martial artist and legendary power creeper Goku, Gohan has always been split between the academic world and having incredible fighting potential. The thing is, it seems like right after getting any major power up, he then gets nerfed hard for a long time. And why is it like this? Well, there's no inherent reason for him to be weak, but at the end of the day, he's not the main character. So no, he can't beat Goku. But with that in mind, I'd argue his nerfs are fairly reasonable. But do they make sense on a character level? Yes and no. Gohan is gentle. He's a lover of academia, so it makes sense for him to follow his passion. But at the same time, it's almost like he forgot there's a world out there with constant existential threats. Get your priorities straight, Gohan. I mean, given his loving and caring nature, especially after he starts a family, there's no way this guy sits idle with his massive fighting potential, just hoping and praying that his loved ones don't die, fending off the next threat to his other loved ones. Now in Super, Gohan is doing his best as a martial artist after realizing exactly what I just stated. I would say that means his nerfs are more of a fault on him as a character, so I consider it bad writing. And then there's Naruto a character that's always been grinding and training to be acknowledged by those around him. Having been ostracized from society as a child, it was important for him to gain the village's respect by hopefully becoming Hokage. The issue there is that he hosts a demon fox in his body, the Ninetales, the same one that previously killed many villagers and has the capacity to destroy the village if it gets out, meaning Naruto symbolizes an insatiable evil looming over everyone. Over time though, Naruto uses this fox's overwhelming power to his advantage and even learns to understand the fox, named Kurama, on a personal level and become friends with him. And through their teamwork, they end up saving the village countless times. With this bond, Naruto is finally able to achieve his goal and become Hokage. So having reached maturity, Naruto has it all. He marries the girl he loves, has two beautiful children, and he finally achieved his dreams. But now he has to protect all that against an onslaught of existential threats. And in an attempt to save his son Boruto, who's also a new protagonist, Naruto uses a technique that rapidly expands his life energy or chakra, potentially sacrificing himself. And that leads to this moment. Oi, Kochida Naruto. Sorosoro Saigo no Toki ga kita yo da. あ、そう見てだな。あの世って場所でも一緒にやっていこうぜ。お前とは生まれた時から一度だって離れたことねえんだ。ナルト、お前と一緒にいられて本当に楽しかったぜ。俺も楽しかったってばよ。こうして一
お前勘違いしてないか一度も嘘は言っとらんぞちゃんと聞いとけよ私の命と引き換えに力を得ると初めからそう聞いてればお前は中クラマお別れだなるとちょっと待てクラマお前代償はわしの命だなるとお前じゃないそろそろお呼びのようだ無茶してるとあっという間にこっち側へ仲間入りだぜ行かないでくれクラマー父ちゃん And from that moment forward, Naruto can no longer rely on the Nine Tails' strength. In order to let new characters shine, the old ones need to take a back seat in some way. So, how does Naruto deal with this loss? Well, he moves on fairly quickly, for Kurama's sake, but he's deeply hurt. And that happens to all of us when we lose someone we care about. But just like Naruto, we have to move on, often for their sake. <laughs>